So this is Stephanie Senna from MIT here to tell us a little bit about her research. So Stephanie, can you please tell us a little bit about what you've done with your research over the past years? Uh, I became interested in, in the que question of autism about eight years ago uh, because I was concerned about the fact that the rate was going up exponentially and I know that exponential growth is a very big problem. Um, and I knew it had to be an environmental factor. And it took me actually six years before I finally figured out what the factor was that was causing the epidemic. And I'm quite confident that I'm right at this point. And I think the factor is glyphosate, which is a uh, something that people don't know what it is. <laughs> so it's actually the active ingredient in the pervasive herbicide Roundup, which is used uh, enormous in enormous amounts on our food and in increasing amounts over time exactly in step with the increase in autism. So the two curves, when you look at the use of glyphosate on corn and soy crops, which are these crops that are engineered to be resistant to it so that they don't die when they're sprayed with it, they soak it up, it gets into the food. And the use has been going up exactly, the curve matches, it perfectly matches the curve for autism. And so uh, correlation doesn't always mean causation, but if you see that kind of correlation, the first thing you're gonna do is to see if there's a plausible causal explanation. And when I looked for that, it was very, very clear um, that oh, I already knew a lot about autism. And then when I started to see what glyphosate does, um, it matched perfectly with the symptoms of autism. So the combination of the correlation and the, um, and the biological explanation makes me very confident that this is the problem that's causing autism. And it's a, um, a chemical that we are not looking at at all because we consider it to be perfectly safe for humans. Uh, the company that produces it assured us that that was the case many years ago, but their studies were grossly inadequate at that time. And so what we need to do now is to do more studies to show that in fact this is the case so we can prove it. So what I have now is a theory, but it, it needs to become a fact and we need to do something big because we need to get rid of, of glyphosate. We need to get rid of the whole concept of chemical-based agriculture. So I'm in my 20s. Eventually I want to have a family. I want to have kids. And I know that corn and soy is in everything that we eat and drink. Um, what is the best way for someone like me to avoid this as much as I can in order to not pass anything on to my future generations? Um, the best thing you can do, unfortunately in the United States, it's possible to buy organic. And organic is a good label that it assures you that it did, they did not use mm -hmm. chemicals, um, herbicides, or any kind of pesticides on the crops. And so if you just adopt a 100% organic diet, you will do a lot to remove the amount of exposure of, your, of yourself and your family to the Roundup. Now you won't avoid it completely and obviously don't use it to kill the weeds on your yard mm -hmm. and of course you've got neighbors who you won't be able to control and it's in the water, in the air. If you live in an area where they're growing the corn, you're going to be in trouble. So there's, we, we don't know exactly to what extent the exposure in the water, in the air, in the, in the food, which ones are most important, you know, which ones are most significant in causing the epidemic. So again, more research needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to avoid toxins in general, so you want to really adopt a, a, a lifestyle that involves eating um, wholesome organic food, whole foods, organic foods. Uh, and I also encourage uh, getting a lot of sunlight exposure to the skin, which will help you to help to protect you from what Roundup does. Oh wow, so what exactly is it doing, um, this Roundup, to our bodies? And you know, if you could explain to me as a 20 year old <laughs> who grew up r using Roundup on my yard and who's now coming into this realization that it's horrible for myself and for right. everybody. Yeah, well, so it's actually, the, there's many different ways in which it disrupts physiology. Uh, and maybe one of the most important ones is that it disrupts the gut microbes. So one of the things that Monsanto assures us, Monsanto is the producer of it, uh, they said it's non-toxic to humans because the enzyme it disrupts, we don't have that enzyme. That sounds like a really good story and that sounds very safe. But our gut microbes do have that enzyme and they use it to produce products that we can't make. And we can't make them because we don't have that enzyme. So when you think about that, it's going to be a problem for us when our gut microbes can't, first of all, can't produce those very important uh, molecules for us. And also, uh, they get sick. Our, our, our 
beneficial microbes get sick because of exposure to glyphosate, and that leaves a vacuum with a, which allows the pathogens to overgrow. So we get leaky gut, inflamed gut, all kinds of gut issues, and then that leads to all kinds of other issues, uh, eventually leading to brain problems. There's a very tight connection between the gut microbes and the brain, and so when the microbes aren't happy, uh, the brain uh, gets uh, in trouble as well. And that's sort of the simple explanation. Well, this is very informative. I want to thank you so much for your information and your work and your studies, and I'm excited to see what else you come across. Thank with. You. So thank you for your time.